And we're coming to you live from the Connect for Climate Facebook page. We're here um, in Bologna for the All for the Green Week in support of the G7 Environment Meeting. This is the SDG uh, Media Zone, so please engage with, with us with hashtag SDG Live, as well as the hashtag All for the Green. Um, it's my great pleasure today to have uh, Alison Argo join me today. Alison is a celebrated filmmaker, um, and she's just launched her, uh, her latest film, The Last Pig. Um, and we'd like to have a bit of a discussion about this. Um, so The Last Pig um, just recently was uh, premiered for the European release um, at Cine Ambiente in Turin. And then also tonight, we're going to be screening it here in Bologna um, with the support of Cineteca. Um, at 8 p.m., so we'd want everybody to come and join that screening tonight. Yes, please, please attend the screening if you can. Absolutely. So maybe just to get going, could you tell us a little bit about The Last Pig? What exactly is the, the film about? Uh, what's the overall narrative, and what are, the, what are the main takeaway messages? The Last Pig is a very intimate story. It's a very experiential film that follows a pig farmer, uh, a humane pig farmer who'd been raising pigs humanely for 10 years. And he reached a point in his life where he began to really care about the pigs and began to understand how um, intelligent and how sensitive they were. And he actually felt that they, they taught him to be a better person. And as his experience evolved, he, he began to have a crisis of the conscience. And uh, his trips to the slaughterhouse began to haunt him. Mm and he, he didn't want to betray these wonderful animals anymore. So he decided to stop being a pig farmer, but it was very difficult because he had 250 pigs still mm. on the farm. And he contacted um, sanctuaries, but all the sanctuaries were full. He could only find a spot for eight pigs, and so he went through the anguish of taking the last pigs to slaughter. So the film doesn't tell anyone what they should think or feel mm. or do. It just invites you to go on his journey. And I, I think that's very much a journey that is symbolic of our times, where society is becoming a lot more environmentally aware. Um, we're more aware of, of our consumption, the foods we eat, um, and also our role we play in, in the whole environmental ecosystem. So it's, it, it's really exciting to see such a personal, uh, engaging narrative. Yes, this is a, a more um, microcosmic story mm. as opposed to a, another film that would take a, a bigger picture. Mm. Um, this this uh, it helps you connect the dots on a very personal level, which I think I think is really important. Of course, there's a place for everything, and we all have to approach it from different angles. But um, and and the the. Pig farmer, where, where exactly is he and, and what's his name? His name is Bob Comus and he works on a farm up in upstate New York. It's mm -hmm. beautiful rolling farmlands um, outside of Albany, New York. Okay. So it's New York State. Fantastic. And the lives that these pigs lived um, were absolutely beautiful. But instead of living for the 20 years that pigs would normally enjoy after eight months, they were taken to the slaughterhouse, and that's why he feels that saying humane pig farming is an oxymoron. How can you have humane slaughter in the same sentence? Mm. So it raises questions, and it, it, it invites the audience to think. Absolutely, and it, um, I'm sure it also raises questions on, on the broader issues of uh, you know, cultivating animals for consumption. Um, how does his pig farming relate to the more commercialized uh, pig well, farming? Well, it, it's an interesting story as well because he's not a factory farmer. Mm. Um, it's a very, it's not intensive farming. And so it's, it's gentler on the environment, but the fact is the world wants cheap meat. And that's part of the problem. People don't want to pay a lot of money for meat. Mm. And so that's why we have this intensive factory farming. And the fact is, we, the world, there's not enough land to produce what's known as happy meat. You mm. could call it happy meat. Mm. Um, although I would argue <laughs> against that terminology. But um, I choose environmentally uh, not to eat meat myself. 
Mm. And this is just another piece of the story, a piece of the puzzle. The film offers one more angle. Absolutely, and, and it really also relates to you know, the broader issues of trying to tackle climate change and, and you know, transition to the sustainable future that we want to build with the uh, sustainable development goals. Um, in particular, we know that human consumption of meat is causing a lot of deforestation, is causing a lot of land degradation that is producing greenhouse gases and that is contributing to the warming of the world, which is causing climate change. Um, so, so what is your kind of takeaway from this personal story and, and what is your message for other farmers and other um, people out there who are, who are you know, dealing with the same kind of issues? I, I guess I would say that there are more compassionate, more environmentally sustainable um, ways to produce food um, and food. Uh, I, I don't feel that, that the farming of animals is sustainable. And I think it also gets into social issues of um, who can afford to buy meat from these these um, kinder farms, um, I, I, I think it, it means that people who are um, socially lower on the scale, they can't afford to eat so-called happy meat. And so um, I think, again, this film um, communicates a different piece of the puzzle, mm. which is also I, I choose not to eat meat because I, I don't feel it's a compassionate thing to do. I feel that that um, the creatures on the planet have a right to be here just as I do. Mm. And so I think if we, if we can learn to be more compassionate to those around us, we'll be more compassionate to one another and also more compassionate to, to the planet. Yeah, and, and, and that takes us also to, to the other films you've been making. So besides The Last Pig, you've produced some incredible films that have also been uh, well uh, nominated and, and, and awarded um, with Emmys and, and other awards. So um, could you give us a bit of an <coughs> overview of, of some of your film ma making in general? What, what are your emphases and, and what are the messages you're trying to relay through your filmmaking? I have always been moved and attracted to the underdog mm -hmm. and to injustice. And I've always felt that some of the greatest injustices that um, exist are towards other species, whether it's animals in captivity or um, animals out in the wild whose lives are being compromised by uh, encroaching you know, human development. And so I've always tried to speak out for, for these other beings who have no voice mm. and to provide a voice for them. Um, my very first film was actually about gorillas. I was not a filmmaker. I was actually in front of the camera and I met a gorilla living in a shopping mall, a tacky little horrible uh, concrete shopping mall, and this silverback gorilla had lived there for almost 30 years. His name was Ivan. He hadn't seen another gorilla for almost 30 years. He hadn't seen the sun or felt the grass. And this to me was such an injustice that I felt that I needed to bring his story to the world. Mm -hmm. And, and stories of gorillas like him. Mm -hmm. And so that was my very first film. It took me three years to make it because I didn't know a thing about filmmaking. But I made it and National Geographic actually aired it mm -hmm. and it won many awards and people were ready for that, for that message. And as a result, Ivan, who was the gorilla, he was moved to a zoo where he could at least be with other gorillas. So it had a happy ending. Fantastic. And when I learned that the power of film it's an amazingly powerful um, tool that we have because someone living here in Bologna can't see what's happening in the oceans unless they see it on film. And so it's, it's uh, I watched Racing Extinction in the, in the town square last night and it was, I wept, I was crying because it was just such a, a beautiful way to share the problems that, that we all share. We're all in this together. So my, I will continue to crusade for other, other species, mm -hmm. other beings that mm -hmm. share the planet with us. I think there are enough people 
enough filmmakers who are out there dealing with social issues that um, involve humans, and so I choose to speak out for non-human beings. Absolutely, and, and that's so <laughs> crucial. I mean, we, we've heard how we are um, in the sixth extinction, how this is the Anthropocene where humans are taking over the world and are basically marginalizing the natural habitats that still remain, um, but are being fragmented and are, are being compressed. Um, so it's becoming increasingly more difficult to keep the biodiversity alive that, that we've got. Um, and, and, and those are very valuable messages that film can relay. Um, so, so beyond this project, what, what's your plan going ahead? What's your next uh, project? Well, it will certainly concern um, the, the well-being of other non-human beings, but also the planet. Uh, I have a few ideas. One involves Asian elephants. Mm -hmm. We're also aware of the plight of, of African elephants, but the, the plight of elephants in Asia is, is very uh, dire. And so I, I'd like to speak out. I've, I've already spoken out in one film mm -hmm. for them, but I'd like to continue to give them a voice. And um, I, have, I have some others, which I'm just now developing. But I, I never thought I would make a film about pigs. Mm. It's not something that was really on my radar. Um, but the more I, I understood um, the problems facing the planet as a result of, of farming animals and the great swaths of land that are being cleared in order to grow the grain to feed the cows mm. that then we eat, it's such an inefficient way, way to feed ourselves. Um, I, I had always wanted to deal with farming, uh, to do a film about farming, and then I, I discovered this story of Bob Comus's, and um, I, I thought that was a great, just a, again, a really tiny personal story to get mm. these issues across. But again, that, that is also the power of film, that you're relaying the emotions and, and the personal actions of individuals and, and it comes across so powerfully through film because you feel like you really get in touch with, with the characters and, and you get an insight, a window into their lives and, and the issues that they're dealing with. Um, so, so I'd also like to broaden this up a little bit. We are here um, organizing a week of action in support of the G7. So what are your messages for leaders, so some of the environmental ministers who will be attending? Um, and also, what are your messages for our audience, for, for the younger audience that's following us on Facebook? Oh, message for, I'll start with the young audience, because I think um, any of you young people who are watching this, you are the future. You are absolutely our future. We depend on you. And so I think, if, if you can learn to tread on the earth um, more carefully and undo some of the problems that, that we've handed to you, um, and I apologize for being one of the people who've given you a, a messy world to deal with, um, I hope that you can watch this film and you can look into the eyes of a pig and you can, and you can see that they're thinking, feeling, beings. Um, I think I, I, I imagine that you will make different choices or you will, you will make your own choices. Mm. I think it's so important for young people to not just continue in their parents' footsteps, but to ask their own questions, to make their own choices, to mm. say, who am I and what do I feel? Not what did my parents feel? Not what does society, society tell me that I should feel or the, or the school feed me? Maybe you don't want to eat what the school is feeding you, and that's fine. And you just need to find your voice and what you believe in. Mm. Um, and I think films like this will give you the opportunity. How can you make choices if you're not informed? It's so important. As, as a filmmaker, I'm a messenger, and I'm just bringing information to all of you out there so that, so that you can be informed and make intelligent, caring choices. Mm. Um, and that goes for adults as well. It's not too late for any of us to change our habits or, you know, I think we just, we all have to open our minds and open our hearts and, and take the blindfold off and make informed choices if we, if we want to turn this, this extinction around. Absolutely. No, thank you very much for those uh, guiding messages. 
thank you, Alison, for being with us. So just as a reminder, we will be uh, screening The Last Pig tonight at 8 p.m. in collaboration with uh, Cineteca. That's at the Sum uh, Cinema Lumen uh, Lumiere um, here in Bologna. Please come join us. And let's watch the tease. And let's enjoy the uh, video tease. It's coming up on your screens in a moment. They follow me, curious, interested. What they don't know is that this communion is a lie. I am not their herd mate. I am a pig farmer. And sometime soon, I'm going to have them killed. being around these incredible animals. I feel an obligation to give them the best life that I can. After 10 years of looking into thousands of pig eyes, I've come to understand that they're never vacant. There's always somebody looking back at me. I've taken 2,000 pigs to the slaughterhouse, and I've become haunted by the ghosts of those pigs. I don't want to have power to decide whether something lives or dies anymore. He is one of the last pigs that I will ever have slaughtered. And thank you very much for joining us. Um, keep on following us live on Facebook, Connect for Climate. Engage in the discussion with hashtag SDG Live as well as hashtag All for the Green. Um, and we heard it from Alison that we really can change the world by making personal choices, by embracing a new future and t having the courage to transition away from old practices to ones that are more sustainable, that are more in line and in, in, in harmony with nature. Um, and as exemplified by uh, Bob in The Last Pig. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.